Hello friends, welcome. I'm Faraz and in today's video, we are going to learn that how to make your XLOOKUP return array dynamic based on your column header. If you have seen my earlier video on VLOOKUP, we have learned that how to make your column index number dynamic based on the header. If you haven't checked that video, then feel free to check out this link. Today it's turn for XLOOKUP. So let's say that I have this XLOOKUP formula which I'm copying from this cell and pasting it to another column. I need that the column to be dynamic. It should pick up the information based on the header from another sheet. So let's go and see the things in action. Before we go ahead and start constructing our formula, let us quickly look the data set. In the data sheet, we have the list of all the employees and their details and we need to pull it on the result sheet. The first most important thing that you need to go you to your source table where is your data and convert this as an excel table. I will just select the range or I will just keep my cell over here and I will press command T for the Mac users and control T for the windows. So command T and click OK and we will go over here and rename it as tbl underscore data. It's always a good habit to give your table names so you can easily identify them wherever they are placed in your workbook. So let me go back over here and let me show you something. When I call this uh, reference which is table tbl and you can see that I got this table name over here. Now we just need to select only the country column or let's say the company one. So I would just go back over here and put the box bracket and I would just select the company over here and close the box bracket. Enter. As you can see, I got all that company names. Now this was very important to understand that how this will work in your XLOOKUP. So let's go and construct the formula again over here equals to XLOOKUP. This is my lookup value comma and let me go back to my data over here. No, I don't need to because my lookup will be TBL data box bracket and it's an ID and close the box bracket comma and my return array of course is again TBL data and this time company close the box bracket and if I don't found that then say no data close parentheses enter and as you can see we got it but still the problem is not solved I've just put a dollar sign before the letter D because we don't want that columns to move so whenever I'll copy this formula so let's say if we copy it over here I'm still getting those results as Apple only now this is an interesting part before I go ahead and start nesting my functions I would just like to show it to you guys in detail that how this thing is happening so let's say we call this table function tbl underscore data and we are going to call that name column close the box brackets enter so this has spilled that information now what we are going to do is we are going to say quotes and this box bracket quotes ampersand and I'm going to reference this column over here because it is also name ampersand open quotes and this time I would just keep this close box bracket enter now as you can see this is just a text which has been returned now we need to convert this into a reference so I would use indirect and this is the construction of the formula remains the same comma and I would say the style even style that's true and let's close the parentheses enter and now you can see I got those names so let me call this as an ID so it should work perfectly yes we got the ID number and let's say it is amount now in case of amount we are getting a reference error so let's go and check the data set over here now the data set says that it's a sales commission so I have to make sure that the column heading is exactly same in my result area. So if I have say, let's say I have an ID and with a space, I will still get that ref error. So make sure that your name is correct. So when I put this 
as a sales commission i got those sales commission values let me go and change it over here put it as sales commission now we need to have it for the name so this construction of the formula is very important i'm going to just cut this formula from here command x and control x for the windows users and we are going to go on the original formula over here and the return array we just need to replace it now if you're finding it difficulty and you might afraid that you might do it incorrectly then i would encourage you to use the formula builder and you can select the return array and you can paste the formula which we have constructed over here now this one which we have constructed we just slightly need to change the reference because right now it is directing it to cell b2 which is name and we have to address it to c2 so again we will come over here and just make sure that we press it as c2 and this time we just want to make sure that our rows are locked so i'll add a dollar sign before the number two and enter and we got the results correctly so let's fill this formula copy and again over here and you're getting the correct results and this is how we can easily make the return array dynamic which is nothing but the column index number in vlookup so that's all for today my friends and i hope you have enjoyed this video so make sure that you hit the like button share this video subscribe to my channel and do let me know in the comment section do you have another idea or trick to handle this kind of column index number or the return array in a dynamic form i would love to see that and i'll be seeing you soon in my next video till then take care happy learning bye